Welcome everyone, this is Zon with Repo Products. This is a video recording on how to create a sanitary system in Revit. The procedures and the steps to do so is very similar to creating other types of systems in Revit, such as HVAC systems or hydronic systems and so forth. In this example, I'm using Revit 2018.2. Um, I created a small model that shows some toilets and urinals and a water heater and I've gone ahead and adjusted the wall so that you can see them a little easier when you're drawing uh, piping. Also, I'll set the um, visual style and the um, level of detail to fine it's, and it's just a little bit more enhanced to see. The first step you want to do when you're creating any kind of system in Revit is to go to the Manage tab of the ribbon head over to the settings panel and click under MEP settings and make the necessary default settings that you want. So when I go under mechanical settings, I have pipe settings over here and it has content such as how the uh, tolerances are set up, the percentage for rise drop annotation size and so on. You have angles as well. By default, Revit's um, default template file will use any angle. Um, you can force it to use specific default angles like 90, 60, 45, things that make sense um, out of the box for a lot of types of fittings and accessories. Conversions, you'll want to head over into here and set up for the main branch, uh, for the main system and the branch system, what type of pipe to be used and what is its original offset height off of the level. Since we are creating a sanitary system, I'll switch this to sanitary and we'll put in here a negative one foot for now. This can be any height that you want. Um, just think about that from the design standpoint. Where is it going? You have segments and sizes. Go ahead and set those as well when it comes to different types of material and also different sizes for use. Fluids as well. Slopes and calculations. So once you're finished, click OK and that's the first step in creating any system. It could be whether you're creating an electrical system, fabrication system, you name it. <clears throat> so set that first. Second step is to place the components that make up the system. And I've already placed the toilets here, the urinals, and then the water source, which is the water heater here. The third step is to tell the software, I need to define what the system is and what the content of the system is. So I'll select any one of the fixtures here. And you'll get a contextual tab in the ribbon called Modify Plumbing Fixtures. And <clears throat> you can click under the Create Systems, click Piping. When you do this, the Create Piping System window will open up. And it'll ask you what type of system that you want to create. Depending on the family that you're working with, you may have the ability to create more than one system. In this case, we can create a sanitary system, a domestic cold water system, or an other. For our example, I'll choose sanitary. It'll ask you to give it a name. You can call it anything that you want. You can then click open in system editor so you can directly get into the editing of what makes up the system. Click OK. And now you'll get a very light shaded green background. You'll get a contextual green tab called modify piping systems and the edit piping systems. Um, contextual tab which has got this kind of skin color pink. You'll see in here the modify command, the properties command, the add to system, remove to system, select equipment, and finishing or canceling. <clears throat> By default add to system is turned on which is it's letting you know um, I need to add other content. So you can individually select other equipment or do a window crossing to tell the software these are all the components that make up the system. When you're finished, you need to tell the system what is the main equipment that it needs to tie back to. And in this case, we'll choose the water heater. When you're finished specifying the design of the system and defining what it is, click Finish Editing System. You'll notice that the fixtures will have a highlighted green color, and that's just to let you visually know they're already made up of a particular system. Now that's a 40 water gallon. If I were to go in here and switch this 40 water gallon, 40 gallon uh, water heater to say 100, it'll make the necessary change and it will still stay as connected to that system. <clears throat> now that that's finished, 
we can then go to the third step of creating the system. The third step is now that the system has been defined, you want to tell the software, create the layout for me. You can manually draw the piping that you want yourself by selecting and using the connectors and the icons to draw piping manually and putting in fittings manually. Uh, but that'll take a little longer than normal um, than doing the automated method. So it's more advisable for you to try to use the automatic method. To do so, select any one of the fixtures and click Generate Layout in the Contextual tab. When you do this, <clears throat> you'll get a Generate Layout blue Contextual tab in the ribbon. You'll have different solutions that are presented to you. The solution types are going to be network, perimeter, and intersection. Within each of the three choices, there are multiple designs. And it says one of five right here. So as you use these arrows, you can jump from one solution to the next. And it will just present itself. And it's trying to figure out what makes the most logical um, design for you. This one's not bad. We'll have to make some minor adjustments, but that's not bad at all. So just remember 5 of 5. If I switch over to perimeter, <clears throat> you can see how the design changes. And again, cycling through all the different options, it may present itself a little nicer or maybe a better solution for us. Um, and the last choice is intersection. And when we do this and scroll through the different choices, these are our results. We want to pick something that is the most logical for what you're trying to do. So for now, I think I'll choose the 5 of 5 for network. Now this is a good starting point, but <clears throat> you might need to manually tweak some of the sketch lines that are going to be used to create that system. If you need to, click Edit Layout over here. And so once you've done that, selected the command, you can actually select the green lines, and you can push and pull and tweak the placement of them. Right now, if I look carefully, <clears throat> you'll see the green line that's created is going to go out of the fixture, into the wall, down the wall, and back out. And it's really close to the edge of that wall. For the sake of ease of the example, and also for maybe general construction purposes, because I have a uh, opening, chase wall opening here, I've got a lot of work, space to work with as a plumber or a subcontractor. So I can just pull this out and let them build the piping to go through the wall, down, and across um, <clears throat> and make it look a little bit more logical to build. So we can do this for all of them. And you'll also notice that there would be some alignment capability as well. You may need to switch to different views like floor plan view to get a sense of where that's going to go. So it's going to go across and down and then across. And some people choose to work in multiple views at the same time. So you might want to tile the views so you can see a little easier. And then, you know, to activate a view, just click left click inside the view, and then you can get an idea of what it looks like. And if you need to use the view cube as well to move around and place them the way you want. If I head over to the plan view, I may want to click edit layout again and select that one point and move it wherever I need to move it. And you'll notice in the 3D view, it also adjusts. And so I'll move these as well. And then I think that might be OK. It may be a little close to that wall, but let's see if it'll build it. Um, if we look over here in the plan view, where it's going to connect to this piece of equipment, we can see that, me, that pulling the line to the left is going to cause a conflict here because the connection's over here, as you can see in the 3D view. So let's move those lines back over, like so. And let's just let it build like this. So now that we're finished with the layout and how we like it, click Finish Layout, and it will build it for us. <clears throat> now, obviously, um, the size of the pipes is just going to be placed in there. Uh, we need to make the adjustments for the size of the pipes. So when I select a segment of pipe, it'll highlight. I can hit tab, and it will grab all the ones that are joined together. If I click again and click, keep clicking tab, it'll highlight all of them. And then I can left click once, and I'll have the entire system selected. 
and over here under diameter I can specify what I want it to be for example half inch and you know depending on the design and what your conditions are for the surrounding area you may need to make an adjustment um, and that's how you go through the process of creating a sanitary um, system in Revit thank you very much